G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, the story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a polar expedition and research boat. This week, Trev and I are back on the arms for our stabilizers. We need to reduce the drag as they're moving through the water, so to do that we create a rounded section for the front of each arm, and then a tapered trailing edge so that we can make an aerofoil, so that when the arm's going through the water, the drag level is quite low. We also get our wings taken away so that they're sandblasted and painted, they're delivered back ready to go, and finally, we get enough work done this week so that next episode, Bruce can turn up, weld the second wing on, and fit the first and second wings permanently to the boat. Walking home late at night, maybe half past two. A little drunk when I'm alright. Here's something I didn't think about. The arms are too bloody heavy to lift by yourself. Done. So, we'll get the blasted. I think about you and I. I want you here with me. Am I out of my mind? Or is this how it should be? You made me sing about love. So just tell me if I'm wrong. But it feels like love. Trev's doing the morning shift. Turned up early and we've got our drill going again. So these are the plates that are going on the end of the arms. So you can see he's got one hole through, second hole nearly there. That's a 32mm hole that he's drilling. The issue that we had is that pulley basically died. So there's a little metal sleeve inside either a hardened alloy or magnesium alloy or something um, pulley. And the little hardened steel sleeve inside started spinning so we had to modify it so that it wouldn't die. We've fixed it now, it's all good and running. And we're able to drill the holes that are much bigger than what this machine probably could normally handle. Hello my abseiling friend. G'day! Yes. A storm <laughs> dropping in. Are you, are you saying you're a storm? <laughs> no, like a, uh, an angel. Coming in like a typhoon. <laughs> I think Dainty is a camouflage for Jess. <laughs> Where do you want to drive and I'll clear your space? Rob said to say hi and send him love. Oh, right, you yeah. 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 Right, so he's uh, drilling the plates that are going to get the on there. I'm about to drill um, the uh, grease nipples that are going into that. So got Where the grease They're the grease nipples. I'm going to drill and tap the grease nipples. That's one done. Lovely. We can get that tacked on today. One hole, one so I'm going to mount mount, um, mount a grease nipple down the back there. Oh, um, and it goes okay, on the, it goes on the underside. So so what I'm thinking. Do you have a wire to it to feed it or no, how do you? No. So what I'm what I'm thinking, but we can in the future if we want to. So I'm going to put it on the underside so that it sits there. You can only grease it when the wings are vertical. So while Trev goes and drills out the plates that go at the other end of these arms, I'm going to start drilling out the grease nipples that go at the pin end. So a trick I often use once I've drilled my clearance holes, I'll stick the tap into the drill and then on low speed basically feed it in, go backwards, clear the threads and then carry on going forward and this allows me to get the tap really straight and keep an even pressure on it and just by going back and forth on the drill you can get a really good finish. Right, I've 
I might hold off putting these grease nipples in until later because I'll probably snap them off. But they are good to go. Lovely. Another morning on Brewpeg. I just wanted to show you something. This is a great representation of how awesome our viewers are. I opened the mail up the other day and there's this little note from DJ basically saying, here's a capacitor for your grinder. So you remember our grinder died and there was a bunch of people that diagnosed it and they thought it might have been this little um, capacitor that goes on the inside of the grinder. Well, off his own back, he went and just sent it to us. Just to go and swap it over and see if we can get that grinder going. So thanks very much, that was a really awesome little surprise. Something truly magical has happened. Look, I've had a tidy up and I've put our grinding discs and cutting wheels and things up onto our bench up the top there. And I even tidied a small space on the bench so that we can start using it. We're gonna get these arms built, get the half round put on them and get the trailing edge put on. And look what came back from the sandblasters, all lovely grey and painted. Thanks, Tony and then finish off a couple of minor jobs on the wing over the back So Tony, our sandblaster, the guy that blasted and painted these wings for us, um, told us that we need to get another layer of, or another couple of layers of primer on these pretty smart because it's porous, so we need to protect the, the steel underneath. Um, but he also said, we need to weld fully continuous along these beams here because he said, no matter how good you are, um, that's going to leak water. So we're going to deal with that. I figured that we could probably get away with it with epoxy and fairing compound, um, but he said, nah, it won't work doesn't matter what you do it's going to leak so we're going to continuous weld those um, I'll probably do that with solid wire just so that we can I'm starting to run a bit low on flux core wire at the minute so I'll belt that out with solid wire and um, yeah we'll get that sealed up Trev in the meantime has made a little jig here you can sort of see the two bits of uh, three inch by or 75 mil by three mil steel that's going to be our trailing edge so we're going to get that welded together tacked up and onto the arms and then we'll start doing the the long runs of welding on these arms This will form the trailing edge of the wing, so if you come down this end, this is the boat end that I'm standing at, you can kind of see it's going to form a, a V as the water comes off that arm. Is that rear up? That <laughs> put me rear up. <laughs> Uh, the background here, Trev is trimming the ends of what's going to become the leading edge of these arms. So we're blending the round pipe basically into a piece of flat pipe, if that makes sense. You'll see it in a sec when we start putting it onto the arms, it basically makes it a really beautiful, lovely um, ending for that pipe. Alright, so you just need to sit it until it gets that mark and you're good. Give it a tack here and I can trim that up there. Yeah, we can trim it on there pretty easy, eh? Yeah. Uh, we're slightly off center. So you can see the trick that we use is basically cutting a bunch of slots and then we clean them up with a grinder, trim them down. That one's still 
needs a little bit of trimming and everything but we'll trim that right down and we'll weld it in and it'll be a beautiful blended in join. In theory that should work. Yeah, I'll go above it like that. You just have to slide it under that clamp but that should line us up. Yeah, that's sitting more even there. We'll just tack it with that, that's pretty good. Hey! Is that your earth plate? Yeah, for both. Right. Who's fancy? That's amazing! What's your thoughts having sort of seen them now? Yeah, quite spacey, you know, like space agey. <laughs> Not necessarily what I call nautical. More like a plane. Futuristic, futuristic. builders. This one. <laughs> they look great. Builders of futuristic arts. <laughs> I love the. Uh, Tape it in. Yeah, they're great, Gorgeous, eh? Gorgeous, yeah. They're beautiful, beautiful. I've said it many times, I know. I would change my ways, I know for sure. When all the crows decide to That's what it looks like with the ends of these welded right up. We'll give them a flapper down and get them nice and clean now. So, Trev's down there trimming up. We've got our arms sitting there ready to go. So we're gonna um, start welding all of those up, do the continuous welds needed on those. We're just coming in for a bit of a parts galore. Grinding discs, flapper wheels, a donated barometer. I love this barometer, donated barometer. We've got a 500 kg um, measuring doodaya. That's the technical term for it. Um, and that's so that we can weigh our wings and we know how much they're gonna work with. And then also our anchor, we know it's 112, but it also gives me an idea to um, calibrate that thing. Yeah, Saturday is work day and Jess is rest day. Yeah, <laughs> just putting on some French toast. For everyone to fill you up to get you back down welding. And heavy metal seems to be the only thing that was for me. And I saw the angels coming down. And this is how you saw. So I started setting up so that I could basically get all of the continuous welding done on these. But I had to, I'm running low on flux core wire, so I swapped over to solid core wire. And um, I've forgotten that you can't really weld in 25 knots of wind, so we're getting a whole bunch of porosity. So we'll put this on hold and we'll uh, carry on with something else. We'll weld this up probably in the morning when it's nowhere near as windy. Over the back, Trev's basically cleaning up the paint that is inside these, uh, the cheeks for the, um, for the arms. So we're gonna clean that paint up and we'll get the arms fitted to the wings. So they'll sit about there somewhere when we're in flight. Yeah, moves lovely. So what I'm thinking is if we measure from here to here, flop it over and measure there to there, we'll be able to tell if it's out of alignment. I know, I know. Never do that. Do 
don't get to know your heroes type thing. Yeah. Don't get too deep into this stuff. This was a moment of truth for us. After everything that we've built on the wings and all of the measurements, hoping that we've got them as accurate as we can, flipping the arm from one end to the other, taking some measurements um, would show us whether or not we've actually got the pin aligned. So if the pin's off, the measurements are going to be different. Um, and by flipping it from one end to the other and measuring from the leading edge back to the arm leading edge, so leading edge of the wing back to the arm leading edge, we can confirm if that pin is correctly aligned. Nice. All right, let's measure that up. Four, two, two, five. It's been real well. That's acceptable. That's great. That's okay. That is awesome. Yeah. After everything that we've built, that's okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Don't mind me. Chair out, she can man straight in the chair. <laughs> Counteracting the wind. <laughs> yes. It's like working with Professor Xavier driving around. <laughs> Professor X reversing into a parking spot. Carefully, carefully. This is this is what they didn't show on X Men. I mean, obviously, Professor Xavier took quite some time to get used to his whiz-bang wheelchair as well. We've made a little garage for this chair, so she can just park it and charge it whenever she's finished. And those are the batteries underneath, are the batteries from the electric dinghy, so we're able to keep them um, in good nick. While we're not using that dinghy, we're able to just use them for something else, so it's pretty cool. Professor X making her way up the human-rated workshop winch. I don't think you get the gravity of the situation here, Jess. She's defying gravity. No, screw you, I'm lifting myself up above this situation. So we've kind of come to a point. We can't do a lot of welding at the second because it's too windy. So what we are going to do in the background is um, clean up the paint from the stainless hinges and we're going to get the doubler aligned back onto the hinges so that we can get this ready to have Bruce back and weld them all on. That's this one? That's your end. This goes in one way better than the other, isn't it? Yeah, it does. What we thought we'd do is we'll model it up at, we'll figure out where the angle is, but it basically has to be 1225mm from the pin diameter, sorry, the pin centre to the arm. I think we're a bit high at the moment, but yeah, that's basically where, where it's going to locate when the wing is in the locked down position. That's your pivot point, so 25, 15, 15. 25, 15, there. Right, so that's how we're feeding. That measurement from the deck down is still accurate, but it needs to be from here to there. Yeah. So what what is that now? I think we're too high. 12.25. So it's 13.25. It's what we have to have from center of that to the top of that. Yeah. So this is the angle of our wing when it's in the lockdown position. If I tilt the camera, sorry, let's go that way. If I tilt the camera that way, so you've got this part of the wing going through the water horizontal, and then you've got the um, part that's inboard, the left hand side of the screen there, is um, aligned with the chine on the boat, and the arm is basically mounting to the deck at that level. So part of our locking mechanism, we've got these plates here this is the 20 mil plate that we use for our anchor we've also cut it up and this is going to be the end of the arms they go onto these piece of high tensile stainless we've had this threaded into a m30 thread so it's uh, 30 mil wide and 3.5 mil thread pitch and we've got some high tensile threaded bar so we've got a meter of high tensile threaded bar here so you can see we've got bloody great big nuts on there we're going to cut this 100 long 100 mil long and uh, we'll make 10 100 mil long studs. That gives us, we only need four, so it gives us a whole stack of spears. We're gonna use it in our new um, drop saw so that we can start getting these nice and true.
These studs are completely repairable and what we mean by that is they're going to be the bolting mechanism that locks the arm down onto the deck. Um, but the other reason why we're using what we call repairable studs is essentially we can, um, as they start to rust, which they will, they're steel, they're not stainless or anything like that, as they start to rust we can just basically take them out and screw a new stud back in. We've got plenty of nuts as well so that we can screw them on whenever they start to rust because again, they're high tensile steel, they're going to rust at some point. So um, the only part of stainless in this whole system is the high tensile stainless that has the thread that this high tensile rod screws into. Um, that should be okay to handle over, you know, over time, that should be fine to, to leave as is, we don't need to do too much with this and the bit that's going to fail is going to be the high tensile, um, mainly from rust and corrosion and things like that, but it's not a big deal, it's 50 bucks to replace all of this and have end up with a whole bunch of spares, so it's an easy part to build some reliability into the boat for the future. That vice looks pretty heavy duty. Be careful, I don't break it then. Yeah, I don't, you might have put too much torque on that. The face shield? Um, right. Got one I'm you can see standing over there, over near the fence. Are so you going away over there just in case? Hey, we've got rotation. All right, so that's the right length. If we do that, we can spin that off this end of it. This is what we're left with, that's the locking mechanism. So you've got the stainless high tensile on the right hand side, the 20mm mild steel plate on the left hand side, you've got the big nut and the um, threaded rod, M30 rod going through, comes through this side on the stainless. So what we're doing is by, by having a threaded rod rather than a bolt, um, we think the stainless is going to be under less sort of strain and tension and being bashed and all that sort of stuff over the years, putting bolts in and out every time we put these arms down and it's only going to be the threaded rod that takes the hiding and the nut and so on which is all easily replaceable um, that stainless is going to be welded into the bow and that's going to be the hardest part to replace um, it's not saying it's not replaceable, we can cut it out just like anything on a steel boat but we don't want to do that and by doing it this way we think we can extend the life of that stainless Trev is trimming off the end of these wings you can see there's a big bit that sticks out randomly into thin air we've got to get rid of that so on both sides there's a bit that sticks out beyond where it should be so we're going to clean that up and that's on this wing as well you can see all of that has to come off basically and then same down that end there as well so he's got the nine inch out and he's going to cut those i'm going to get this wing here and then mount the bolting mechanism which is this gadget here i'm going to mount that onto the end of it so that we can start getting these wings finished Trev's just trimming off this last corner of the arm. Just 
so right the way through cut that and what that allows on this arm over here there you go one plate welded on but at this end of the arm this is the leading edge we've got our blended half round and if you come around the trailing edge of the wing that's what we're doing on the back of the right at the bottom down by the pin so it's pretty early trying to beat the sun <laughs> not really I'm trying to beat the wind it's been blowing like crazy last two or three days something like that like 25 knots so welding's just not been a thing so this morning we can have a go see if we can get this thing welded up before the wind comes up Dame settled in to do the welding. It took him about six hours, he spread out over two days. And in the end it was 24 metres per arm. That's 79 feet per arm of weld. So, big job. Now it starts to rain, so let's enjoy it. I can't 